so I've once again made a master template. This time I used a router and a circle jig instead of using a fared line and the belt sander. Uh, so now that I have my master template, I need to start duplicating it. So if I'm only bending laminates that are an inch and a half wide, it's not nearly as important to create a master template because I could just attach two pieces of MDF, which will be an inch and a half, and shape them all together. But as soon as you start to bend wider laminates or start to build more complex molds, it's gonna be more and more important that you create this master template and then duplicate it using the flush trim bit on the router. So for this piece, I'm just, it's probably only gonna be three layers of MDF thick in the end, but I'm just gonna pretend that it will be a little bit wider and I'm gonna duplicate these with the router. Uh, so. I've kind of flushed this up with my fingers on the end here uh, on a bigger piece of MDF. And then I'm going to take a pencil and just trace the outline of my template. And then I'm going to go cut this out on the bandsaw, leaving about a sixteenth of an inch of waste on, all, on the outside. OK, so I've rough cut two pieces with about six, a sixteenth of extra material around the entire edge that I can now flush trim on the router. And there's a number of different ways that I can attach my master template onto my piece to flush trim it. Um, the fastest and most economic way is going to be to use a pin nailer and just nail them together. Uh, sometimes I'll even put in a little glue and then nail it together to create a permanent mold. Um, and then the most versatile way is going to be to screw it together. Um, for me personally, I like to generally screw pieces together because I like the option of being able to take it apart later on. Uh, and especially because you will be repurposing your one part mold into a two part mold, I would encourage you to at the very least screw on your master template, uh, but you can pin nail the rest of the layers together. Uh, and a third option will be to use double stick tape and double stick tape, especially uh, the film style, uh, which is used for turning and applying golf handles. Uh, is incredibly strong. It's activated by clamp pressure and you only really need a little bit of it to create pretty much a permanent bond. Uh, carpet tape also works really well. Um, for me, I want the most versatile, but probably the more time consuming option, which is going to be screws. Um, so you can see in my master template, I've already pre-drilled some holes. And the important thing about these holes is that they are wider than the threads of the screw. So you can see that the screw can, well, mostly wider. The screw can pretty much pass freely through those holes. And this is something that seems really basic, but I see people make this mistake all the time. They'll pre-drill for their screws and it will only be the thickness of the shank both through both layers but by only pre-drilling through both layers, the thickness of the shank, you're actually, the threads of the, the screw will start engaging in both layers and they'll actually pull the two layers apart. So if through the first layer that I'm attaching to the piece, I make that hole wider than the threads, the threads won't be able to engage with the first layer, they will only engage with that second layer and they'll pull the layers tightly together. So it seems super obvious, but I just wanted to really emphasize that for everyone because for me, I never uh, noticed that until it was explicitly pointed out to me. So I'm just gonna flush these guys up with my fingers at the base. Uh, and then I have a drill bit and this drill bit is just the size of the shank. So it's narrower than the thread. This is gonna be used to pre-drill my bottom layer so flush trimming should be a pretty familiar skill to you from intro, but just in case you didn't have the opportunity to learn flush trimming, um, I've set the bearing of my router comfortably in the center of my master template. And I've just made sure that the cutting surface of my router bit is above the thickness of the layer of MDF that I'm going to be cutting through. Uh, and then the most dangerous part of any kind of uh, pass on the router is go always going to be the entrance and the exit. 
So you'll often see little anchor pins in the bed of the router uh, that you can use to pivot off to make your entrance a little bit more controlled. In this case, I don't know where my anchor pins are. So I'm gonna be using the actual fence of the router to pivot in and give myself just a little bit more control. It's just an MDF mold, so I'm not too worried about it catching, but especially if you're ever doing anything out of a dense material like solid wood, you'll really wanna be careful on your entrance and exits. You might notice that when you make duplicates of your master template, uh, that the router bit is cutting slightly out of flush. Um, this could be for a number of reasons. It could just be a cheaper router bit uh, and the manufacturers haven't bothered to make it perfectly flush. Uh, it could be that your router bit has been sharpened at some point and it's no longer the same uh, depth of cut as it originally was, or it could just be that your router bit is dull and it's not cutting as deeply as it used to be. Uh, the easiest way to get around this is to have your master template and not actually use your master template in your mold. Just use your master template to cut a whole bunch of pieces for your mold and then those pieces will all be identical because the router bit will be cutting identically, uh, even if it's not matching the profile of your master template perfectly.